On this episode... Okay, we've got a problem. Will Rob be in time to save Sally the schnauzer? If she gets infection of the bone, there's hell to pay. We'll take that tooth out today. Oh, what did you do to yourself, buddy? Heavy haulage is called in to save love-struck tortoise, Hugo. Please don't follow me. Yeah. Oh, oh shit, shit. Oh, okay. Yeah, I feel them. And little Lulu is riddled with lumps. So it's turned from two to four. Oh. And faces an uncertain future. If it's already spread to the lungs, we have to have another conversation. You make my world a better place. Come on, there's your girl. I can depend on you. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I feel them. We don't quite know yet if this is actually breast cancer. I just know that these masses, or these growths, if you will, are associated with the mammary glands. She's got two up here. She's got a third one here, too. I don't know if you've noticed that. No. No. Let me show you this one here. Let me show you this one. It's all right. It's gonna be alright. In Atlanta, at Arvid's busy practice, Terrier Lulu is the first patient, and she's been brought in by owners Robin and John. Hello, hello, how hey. you doing? Hi. I'm Dr. Edward. I'm Robin. Nice Lewis. to meet you. John. Nice to meet nice you. To meet you. This is Lulu. Lulu. Hey. This is Miss Lulu. <laughs> how are you? See, I'm a little how nervous right now. So Lulu is an 11-year-old Yorkie that uh, came in to see me for the first time today. The owners noticed two lumps on her abdomen about two weeks ago. Yeah, I feel them. In a lot of dogs, by the time they're diagnosed, 25 to 50% of mammary tumors have already started to spread. Actually, a fourth one. Oh, I so see it. So it's turned from two to four. Oh. Oh, that's right, right there. there. So oh. yeah, so she's got those two. These are new. If the tumor is malignant, doesn't mean it's a death sentence yet, but these tumors tend to be more aggressive with a high risk for spreading to other parts of the body and ultimately causing fatality. Got those two. These are new. Right there, and then this one, this one, this one there. I feel this. Oh my God. Okay, hold on one yep. sec. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. wait. Yes. The faster we can do this, the better. I'm really nervous. A Hugo means so much to us, and he's never been off the ground before, so I actually feel a little bit sick to my stomach. Good morning. On the New South Wales Central Coast, it's a beautiful day at the Australian Reptile Park. Hi, Hugo. Hugo is one of our Galapagos tortoises. He is a crowd favourite. Everyone comes to see Hugo. We absolutely adore him. Look at you beautiful. But this morning, it seems the 73-year-old has had a misadventure. Oh, what did you do to yourself, buddy? Oh, mate. Have a look under there. It's quite bad, so isn't it? So sore. It's like a massive yeah, looks bad. crack yeah. down the middle. His whole shell was cracked and it looks really, really terrible. What do you think he's done it on? He's probably, since Estrella's not in here, maybe it's one of the rocks in the exhibit. He has been uh, rubbing himself on the rocks since Estrella arrived, so maybe he's just super frustrated. Yeah, he must be. Hugo is 73 and he's never had a female, he's never had a mate, so it was my mission to find one for him. Estrella arrived at the reptile park after three long years of waiting for her. But Hugo was out of luck. Estrella isn't so keen on being courted by the 73-year-old Hugo. Estrella's just a little bit too young for the whole breeding cycle at the moment. So she's just starting to produce follicles, but she's a bit small for Hugo. So we've put bollards in to make sure we can keep them separate so Hugo doesn't actually hurt her. Must be a bit frustrated, hey buddy? <laughs> Can you just hold up some food so we yeah, can have yeah, a better look? Yeah, of course. Yep, no worries. Come on, Hughes. You come. I 
think what's happened is because of his frustrations with Estrella being next door and he's unable to access her, he's actually mating with the rocks inside of his enclosure because I guess they look like a tortoise and he's actually cracked his shell. It's very sore and I'm very worried about the infection that could possibly get in there. We'll have to call Robin. Yeah, for sure. Get her here immediately. Yeah, sounds good. We don't want to muck around with Hugo and an infection getting into his body. So we have to call our vet, Robin, and get her here immediately so we can sort him out good and proper. Oh, buddy. What have you done? I feel this. Goodness. Oh my gosh. Those seem harder than up here. Yeah. In Atlanta, Arvid has found multiple lumps on tiny Lulu's chest, and devoted owners Robin and John are devastated. They're associated with the mammary glands, which at her age is a risk for for cancer, okay? Breast cancer. Now, no one knows what causes them, but there is a thought that hormones may play a big role in the development of these. Mm -hmm. And she's not spayed yet, correct? No, correct. she's not. Okay. Dogs that are not spayed have a very high risk of developing breast cancer later on in life. Typically, if you spay them before they're a year old, the chances of them getting breast cancer is about 0.05%. With each heat cycle, it just skyrockets. The main way a lot of these spread are through the lymphatics or in the bloodstream. Okay, and the places that they can end up are in the lungs. If it's already spread to the lungs, we have to have another conversation. Yeah. Okay, Sounds thank good. you. Just rest, relax. Oh yeah, yeah, that's gonna happen. Let's put our hands together like this. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> and we'll be right back. Okay, All thank right. you. You're welcome. We're gonna take some x-rays of Lulu's chest to see what we find. And hopefully, there's nothing there. Oh man, say a prayer. Buddy, what have you done? At the Australian Reptile Park, Vet Robin has been urgently called to check out injuries on the park's oldest resident, Galapagos tortoise Hugo. Good, thanks. What's he done? So I looked under his shell and couldn't believe it. Yeah. He's cracked it and it's bleeding. Oh no. Yeah, it looks really sore. Oh yeah, that does not look good. You've done a good job on it, that's for sure. Yeah, so we think he's rubbed it on a rock. Yeah. He's very frustrated since Estrella came. So we think that constant rubbing, yeah. he's cracked that shell. So the plastron is a very sensitive part of the shell and they actually have nerve endings. So the fact that he has a wound there is gonna be very annoying to him. It's a big hole under there. So there's a lot of flaking shell and there's some raw tissue. So there's a lot of surface area that bacteria can get in. Definitely needs to be cleaned up and taken this off and covered up. And because it contacts the ground, it can get an infection. And that infection can then get systemic and make him very ill. So we have to jump on it pretty quick and make sure that we get it healed. Hugo is very special. We definitely have to make sure that it doesn't get infected. And it's a very difficult spot yeah. being that it's underneath. Yeah. And he's going to be sitting on it and it's hard to keep him out of the dirt. Yeah. So it's very possible it's going to get infected. So for now, I think we'll get you to put a bandage on it and then we'll come up with something that's a little more permanent because we can't leave a bandage on all the time. Yeah. Because yeah. bandage long term is not good for his shell. Okay. And it's very difficult to keep something like that on him all the time. Okay. He's still going to want to rub. That's going to be part of the problem. <laughs> we need to protect him. Yes. We'll fix you up. We love you. But maneuvering a 200 kilogram tortoise to fix his shell is going to be a massive challenge. I'm not sure how we're going to be able to treat this and make sure that we get it to heal. It's in a really tricky spot, so we'll have to put our heads together and come up with a plan. So I'll hold him up and you guys wrap him. It's all right, buddy. Robin is concerned about the infection, so the most important part right now is to cover that up and make sure that it can't get dirt in it. It's all right, buddy. We're going to look after you. We are going to put a little plywood board there to protect that shell underneath so that if he does go visit the rocks again, that his shell is protected. How's it looking, Sam? It's pretty raw under there. It's quite red, to be honest. 
it's not something that's often done, especially in something as large as Hugo. So the fact that he's 187 kilos and it's underneath him, you really don't have a lot of access. So we're gonna have to figure out a way to lift him off the ground and get access without endangering him or the us that are working underneath him. Only the best for Hugo. All right, buddy. Love you, buddy. So this side's all lovely, that's nice. Okay, we've got a problem. Yeah, the top tooth's gone. Oh, has it? Yeah, oh. it's just the bottom tooth, and the bottom tooth's going into the jaw, into the top jaw, virtually. We had problems with the mouth before, but what's oh, happening now? In Sydney's west, Carol and Ray have brought in their schnauzer Sally to Rob for a much needed return visit. Well, it's just that the tooth's starting to break up now, and the top one could come down and crunch into it. It wasn't that long ago that we had to anaesthetise her and take nearly all her teeth out. We left two, we thought she could chew those, a top and bottom tooth at the back. Just pop her up here, Ray, for me, just lean her over. Is it good girl? Hey, Sally, my darling. Carol and Ray rescued Sally from a puppy farm. Her condition was so bad that her teeth were falling out and her kidney and liver functions were compromised. The poor little teats that she had were hanging down about an inch. And um, it was, that was so sad when I saw her like that. And then when I brought her home, she just scuttled straight into a corner. She was so terrified. The top tooth's gone. Oh, has it? Yeah, oh. it's just the bottom tooth. And the bottom tooth's going into the jaw, into the top jaw, virtually. Oh. The bottom tooth is jamming itself into that top jaw over and over again. Every time she just closes her mouth, that's happening to her. If we let it keep going, it'll eventually infect the bone, which we don't want. An, an infection of the bone is called osteomyelitis. If she gets an infection of the bone, there's hell to pay. We're not going that far. We'll take that tooth out today. She's not had an easy life, and thank God for you people, giving her such a beautiful home. She's very spoiled, Carol. She pirouettes beautifully when I get up and say good morning to her. She's like a ballerina. I come out and I say, good morning, Sally. And she looks at me and she does pirouette. It's really interesting. She goes round and round. Yeah. OK, let's do it. Bye, treasure. See you soon. Rob will need her to pass a vital blood test. Good girl, good girl. This is to make sure that all her organ functions and everything is fine before we do the anaesthetic. She's been through such trauma in her life, it wouldn't be unusual for her to have some issues of kidney function or liver function. And of course, that's going to affect the anaesthetic. Okay, we'll put these in the lab. I have a real soft spot for this little dog, to be honest. I tend to feel a bit for her for what she's been through. Dogs don't ask to be brought into the world, but when they are, we owe it to them. It behoves us to give them a decent life. She had anything but that at the start. Come on, buddy. At the Australian Reptile Park, there's excitement in the tortoise enclosure. The team has come up with an ambitious plan to replace the temporary bandage on Hugo's cracked shell with a more permanent solution. Hugo is 187 kilos and his wound is right underneath. We have to lift him off the ground, which is a massive deal. So we're calling in the big guns. Hugo's speedy Gonzalez today. Yeah, <laughs> nice and early for a walk in the morning. I have no idea how Hugo is going to react in this situation. He has to be hoisted up off the ground and a tortoise doesn't leave the ground. Can we get you up on there? Everyone has their little job that they're doing, but my sole job is to make sure that Hugo's okay. So I'll be checking on him, making sure everything's going smoothly and that Hugo is happy and healthy. All right, ready to go? First, the team needs to securely strap Hugo so that he can be safely hoisted by the excavator. So yeah, like one back there and then somehow do one. Is that a way? 
And we can still put a towel underneath there to stabilize it. Keep Fred. We're trying all different things with these straps. We've got all the right equipment, but we're just trying to figure out how it fits. Okay, so do we want to try going the other way? I think we're going to have to. Yep. As long as we can just avoid where we need to put the brackets. Yep. As soon as Hugo's massive body is lifted, Robin will be working directly underneath to secure a special protective cast. Okay. Up. Okay. Okay. Hold on one sec. Wait, wait. Yep. Oh, wait, 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 wait. So ideally we'd have something like a car lift at a mechanic shop so we could get under safely. Okay, we're gonna have to do something different. Oh, we're gonna, oh, we're right gonna have to cross it. Go down, yeah. Brynn, go down. So it's a bit scary to have that amount of weight over your head. Yeah, it just, it was starting to unroll, Brendan. So I think if we do it so that it's trapping itself. I'm really nervous. A Hugo means so much to us and he's never been off the ground before. So I actually feel a little bit sick to my stomach. No skin here, no skin on that side. Please don't fall on me. Let's go. Absolutely. Let's go pull some of this stuff off. Go to Edge, since he likes to rub. Yeah. Oh. oh, shit, shit. If it's already spread to the lungs, we have to have another conversation. Yeah. In Atlanta, it's an anxious wait for Robin and John. Say a prayer as x-rays of Lulu's chest get underway. Arvid will be looking for any signs of cancer in Lulu's lungs, which would mean that her mammary tumors have spread to other parts of her body. Okay. Let's get a quick VD and then we'll be done. Okay, so took the x-rays and so far, clean. <laughs> the owners are thrilled that there's no evidence of spreading to the lungs or the lymph nodes. Now it's time to get ready for surgery. We're gonna go ahead so and take her to so surgery. Good. So far, so good. Take her to surgery, get those out of there. Although Robin and John are determined to stay positive, Lulu's mysterious lumps are still a major concern. So doing this surgery on Lulu is gonna be pretty difficult because the masses are large and there are multiple masses, which means I'm gonna to have to remove a lot of skin and by removing a lot of skin, makes it very difficult to close. Before Arvid tackles the lumps, he must first spay the little dog. Now the spay is done. This is where the fun part begins. Trying to figure out how to remove these masses. That's gonna be tough. As I'm looking, at the masses to try to figure out the best way to go about removing them. Uh-oh, I noticed that there's a fifth mass under the skin in the same area as the others. This is not good. Yeah, this is gonna be tough. Please don't fall on me. Oh, oh shit. shit. That's not going to do it again, is it? Please tell me no. At the Australian Reptile Park, tensions are high as vet Robin, Keeper Haley, and the team begin urgent repairs on 200 kilo tortoise Hugo's cracked shell. Everybody okay? Not pressure on any of his soft tissue? Uh, yeah. So start heating up those glues, please. The plan is to try to attach a special protective cast that will be fastened to Hugo's underside using cable ties. Operation Hoist Galap is well underway. We've got Robin underneath looking like a mechanic. We've got the whole team there making sure that Hugo's okay, that the straps are in place and they're not giving way. This is, I feel like a sea turtle. <laughs> <laughs> this is definitely not something that happens every single day. All right, start heating up the adhesive. All right, buddy. But in order for the cast to be fitted, Vet Robin must work quickly to secure key anchor points in place. I need you underneath here because I'm going to hold and you're going to glue. Run the faster we can do this, the better. The team is anxious to make sure 73-year-old Hugo doesn't become stressed and are racing the clock to get him back on firm ground as quickly as possible. You happy? Just, yeah, I'm just concerned about the adhesive giving way. If we can get the yeah. adhesive to work, it's just a little cold. Yeah. 
We would pick the coldest morning of the year to do something that needs adhesive. And adhesive doesn't like to stick in cold weather. Hold on, buddy. Hold on, bud. All right. Is this the 90 second one, Luke? Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's coming off? Yeah, it's coming off. Damn it. The longer he's up, the more dangerous it is, and it's just not sticking. I think it's gonna come off. Yeah. We need something that sticks instantly. This is taking so much time. Robin is holding on the plate and the glue just isn't sticking. We've brought in a hairdryer to try and set it a little bit quicker, but it's taking way too long for my liking. We're panicking a little bit because it's dangerous for everyone the longer he is up there. False advertising. It's not 90 second one. <laughs> just found a fifth tumor. Oh in Atlanta, Arvid is shocked to discover little Lulu has a fifth tumor in her mammary tissue. Trying to get this figured out, it's going to be tough. When you remove these tumors, you got to go wide and deep to make sure you get all of it, which leaves a huge gap in the skin. And you only have so much skin to work with. So when you're removing multiple masses, that just makes the gap even bigger, so it makes it tough to close the skin at that point. This hole just keeps getting bigger and bigger. That is a problem. Another big one here. Got one side gone. I'm going to close this. Now, I gotta work on this other side here. This is tough. Urgent pathology tests will determine if Lulu's lumps are cancer. I think I'm gonna be able to get this closed. The tissue is coming together nicely and there's not a lot of tension. Okay, surgery is done. Now another critical point in the procedure is her recovering from anesthesia. So once she's up, then I'll be able to breathe. Nice and toasty. But Arvid can't relax. Right. A second Yorkshire Terrier has just been rushed in for emergency surgery. Oh boy. coming off? Yeah, it's coming off. Damn it. At the Australian Reptile Park, an ambitious attempt to try to fix Tortoise Hugo's cracked shell isn't going to plan. False advertising, it's not 90 second one. <laughs> With Hugo suspended just centimeters above them, Vet Robin and the team are trying to attach a special protective plate over his cracked shell. We have to do this really quickly. The clock's ticking um, and it's touch and go at the moment. But because of the cold temperature, the adhesive they're using is refusing to stick. Oh, the other one's come off. <sighs> coldest morning of the year and the glue just won't stick. The longer Hugo is up in the air, it's dangerous for everyone. So we need to act fast and get him back down to the ground. We can do. Anybody got any ideas? Silicon? Um, can we hair dry them a bit more? But it won't heat, loosen the glue. With tensions running high, Keeper Haley's worried the nerves are getting to everyone. I hope he doesn't do a poo. <laughs> yeah, I was actually just thinking the exact same thing. I am definitely too. in the firing I'll line. I'll get it straight in the face. No, I'm pretty sure it's aimed at me, Haley. And his head is above me, his tail is below me, right in the firing line if he decides to have a bowel movement. You see, like that little bit right there is dry. Yeah. So when all of it gets that way, <laughs> then I'll let go. Then we'll let go. <laughs> all right, sweetheart. All right, all right. It's all right. It's all right. We got just a few more minutes. The longer Hugo is up off the ground, the more stressed he's become. He's been such a good boy, but he's now starting to flail his legs a little bit. I noticed a little bit of dribble coming out of his mouth. I don't like it at all. I want him back down on the ground. All right, sweetie, we'll let you down in a second, I promise. Time is running out, so the team makes one last attempt to secure the plate. Where you want it? Right there. Yeah. I'll hold it. You got glue on it? Yep. Yeah. Right. If the four corners stay, 
No, I think we're okay. And finally, some positive signs. Mine is sticking so far. Is it better now, Kat? Yeah, yeah. it's getting there, for sure. Getting out, Rob? Yeah. Robin's finally told us that she's happy with the glue and that we can bring Hugo down. It can't come soon enough. I want Hugo's four feet solid on the ground. Yep. Just gonna keep my hand on here until I have to let go. It was a bit dicey to begin with, but it seems to be sticking. We'll just keep our fingers crossed that the glue does its job, our plate stays in place, and it's just a big relief to have that off our plate. He says, oh, I found my carrot, I'm happy. <laughs> you deserve a box of carrots. And nobody is more relieved than Hayley. Good boy, Hugo, you did so well up there. I feel so relieved. A huge weight has been lifted from my shoulders because Hugo is finally back on the ground and the first thing he did was start eating grass, which makes me so happy because he's not stressed and it was a success. Good boy. So proud of you. Yeah, we are. So proud of you. Okay, the surgery is done. In Atlanta, just as Arvid has finished major surgery on Lulu's mammary lumps, a second Yorkshire Terrier, Bella, has just been rushed in. I try to usually save this procedure as a last resort, but with her kidney starting to go into kidney failure, I feel like I gotta take a chance, take the stones out. Bella's owner, Evie, has been bringing her in for ongoing treatment for chronic kidney stones. I brought Bella here today to see Dr. Edward because she started to look very lethargic. She stopped eating. I just knew something was up. It's turning into an extremely busy day, with back-to-back -back surgeries on two almost identical dogs. We got two Yorkies, the same age, the same weight, same size, with two serious procedures. <laughs> Crazy. Arvid will need an extra set of hands for the delicate surgery. All right, step on in, Isabel. So my assistant, Isabel, is gonna help me. And we got the, the artery and the vein to the kidney. So you see this here? I'm gonna need you to clamp. If you don't clamp it, it's gonna bleed, okay? So you're gonna have to clamp with your hand, with your fingers, and then hold it till I tell you to let go. Be careful, be careful, be careful. Go. With the blood supply to the kidney now shut off, Arvid is racing the clock to remove the kidney stones. And there's the kidney stones. Oh my gosh, these are some big stones. How is the kidney functioning with these stones in it? Open up a syringe for me real quick. Quick, 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 right there, right there. Yep. The second Arvid has finished flushing the kidney, Isabel must release the pressure so blood can start flowing again. I'll let you know. Hopefully, this works. If it doesn't, I may have to take out the whole kidney. All right, I'm gonna say let go, let go, let go. As she lets it go, the blood flow instantly starts coming back into the kidney. That's a great sign. Everything's looking pretty good. Now it's time to close Bella up and get her off the surgery table. Okay, so we're done. Arvid can't wait to share the good news with Bella's owner, Evie. Hi, Evie, how are you? Wonderful, how are you? Doing great, doing great. Just calling to let you know that uh, the surgery is complete with Bella. She did very well and the surgery went as well as it could go. I'll be able to pick her up tomorrow? Yes, yes, she'll be ready to go tomorrow. So she's nice and comfy right now. Wonderful. Thank you, Dr. Edwards, so much for doing this uh, for her, okay? You're very I welcome. I feel so relieved. Yeah, the top tooth's gone, and the bottom tooth's going into the jaw. If she gets infection of the bone, there's hell to pay. We're not going that far. We'll take that tooth out today. In Sydney's West, Rob is keen to get Schnauzer Sally dancing again, but ahead of any fancy footwork, she needs urgent surgery to remove a tooth that's damaging her gum and causing a lot of pain. 
all this for one tooth, one tooth. All her bloods have come back normal, really normal, which is great. Like I said, she really has had a really rough start to life. So we're happy. We're just going to still use gas because we want to get her home as quickly as possible. Hold it. Okay, lights on. Camera action. And that's a really big tooth. You can see the hole that's forming in there. And we don't want it to break through that gum line up the top and into the bone, or we're in trouble. So that tooth, even though in itself it's probably a healthy tooth, has to go. Her teeth were rotting before. They were literally falling out of her. And in fact, the infection was causing a lot of problems. Even her, last time we did bloods on her, she was not good. And it was all because of infection from the mouth, from the rotten teeth. Um, and we ended up having to take all but two teeth out. One of those two teeth that we left has fallen out. And so now we've got to take this last one out. You grab some swabs, please, Alessandra. Thanks, just swab it there for me. But it has to come out because it's causing a lot of damage to the, the uh, top jaw. You know, it's digging in, it's got a hole there, and it's hurting her, you know, it's actually causing her pain now. Okay, our job is done. All that root there, all that was inside the bone. One stitch and we're done. With the problematic tooth now removed safely, it's time to wake Sally up. It's me! <laughs> hey guys! Here she is! How good is that? All done. All oh, done. Darling, so lovely to see you. So she's a little bit groggy uh, from the gas, but she'll be more and more awake. By the time we get home, she'll be fully awake. Now, do you want the tooth put under her pillow tonight? For the tooth fairy? Uh, no. No. No, okay. We haven't got any thruppances anymore. <laughs> no thruppances? No. What happened to them? Oh, beautiful. <laughs> What's pretty to you? Whatever she's been eating normally, whatever yes. you've been giving her, yeah, don't change don't it. Change Pumpkin, it. carrots, really soft, really cooked up. Yeah. We don't want al dente, they are going to be soft. Yep. So the soft and mashed, yep. Yeah. Oh, so relieved. And she looks so good. So. Beautiful, don't you, darling? I'd say tomorrow morning there'll be tomorrow pirouettes, morning. won't there? Little pirouettes. <laughs> All the best. Keep dancing, then. Keep dancing. Thank you so much. Pleasure, darling. Oh, All the best. best. Yeah, thank you. Pleasure. Oh. Look at that face. In Atlanta, it's been a massive day for Arvid and his team, but everyone is enjoying a tremendous high as they prepare to give gorgeous Lulu back to her excited owners, Robin and John. Okay, I'm ready. Where's my yeah, puppy? I know. Hello, hello. Hello, baby. Okay, sweet. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. In a little bit. You're yeah. so good. Got a little haircut, <laughs> a little hair pulled back. Yeah, I got a little bow. So uh, the surgery went um, as good as it could. And I found a fifth one. Oh, wow. Really? Found a fifth one. So it was like, they just got like popping up. Wow. Oh, so removed it as well. Definitely got an extreme tummy tuck there. Yeah. But other than that, she did pretty good. Uh, the next call I'm really looking forward to is the uh, call on the biopsy and hoping that, you know, they're benign. But even if they're not, you know, at least we've got them and, you know, she's got a good chance of them not coming back. Because so, yeah. we can't do without her. That's right. Yeah, right. we can't do without you, can we? We need yeah. you to boss us around. Yeah, Lulu, sweet girl. You'll be good, okay? All right. You be say good. Say thank you. Thank you. Don't you don't want to say thank you. You want to bite know. him, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Lulu, you be good. All right. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank You're you. welcome. All right, sweet girl. Let's go. Such a beautiful boy. At the Australian Reptile Park, Keeper Haley is now extra vigilant with her favorite boy, Hugo. Oh, nearly got me up to us over the next few months to just watch him like a hawk and make sure he doesn't start climbing on top of rocks again. 
This big boy doesn't do anything in a hurry. And Vet Robin says that includes healing. Because that area is in an area that's going to be traumatized, the plate should help. But it could take up to four years for that to completely heal. So hopefully it will heal faster, but we'll just see how it goes. And great news for Little Yorkshire Terrier Lulu's owners. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Arvid reports that pathology tests on all five mammary lumps came back negative for cancer. If you guys loved that video, great. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel below. That way. <laughs> <laughs>